ways were harsh ways. Every dispute ended on the point of a sword. Every new resource claimed by the point of a spear. It didn't matter why. Gold, iron, promises, love, faith, or destiny. They always found a reason to hate. Gladly and often, they tore one another apart. The sages, the watchers of the world, could not bear it. Hundreds of thousands of lives thrown aside this senseless waste. They convened, and with the conviction of a seasoned warrior, ended the suffering. They called it the Veil. Its immense power rent the negativity from the world's people. When they slid the veil over the world, they saved it. All war was over. The ability to harm, hate, fear, and despair slid from their bodies and pulled around their feet. That is the veil's power. It banishes the dark parts of people's hearts to the shadows. The sages couldn't have known at the time, but I know now. If you lock away a portion of a consciousness, the consciousness does not cease to exist. The banished bits of the people's souls were trapped in darkness, and the sages needed to ensure that they stayed that way. As their bodies grew frail, they channeled their power into their great temples. As they passed, their temples remained as beacons to maintain the veil. My creators were right. Without war, the world prospered. Art, agriculture, poetry, and knowledge all flourished. I have seen the beauty people can create in the absence of darkness. The old ways faded from the people's memories. The sages, their temples, and their magic shriveled. All the while their shadows lurk. temple 
that our villain was actually undoing the magic for. So when he got hit by that wave of the magic being undone right there, the same thing that almost happened to him that happened to the main villain. His shadow came to life. And now he's alive. But the difference is his shadow is actually on the ground, up against the wall. He's actually just the shadow itself is living. He can speak to you, talk back to you. And think about this. You're a person who's grown up all your life just being a sweet, happy person. You know, this, now you have this shadow who's essentially only known anger, hate, despair. How would you deal with that? I mean, we all went through you know, middle school and high school, so we learned the difference between being a semi-asshole and a not-so-bad person. <laughs> now we have the two complete opposites having to meet. So it's almost the opposite in the way of what happened to our building, where now instead of even having two personalities in one body, you've got two personalities that do it at the same time. That's what makes them both partners in this adventure. And the way they work together is with your player's lantern. So the way this actually works is going to be a third person adventure game. Now, as you're going through the world, you're going to have this lantern actually floating around you. You control telekinetically. It just floats about, up and down, and distance away from you. And it projects your shadow up against the walls. Now, the key here is that because your shadow is alive now, it can actually interact with other shadows. So if, like, for instance, the people are there against the wall, their shadow is going to against the wall behind me. If I have my lantern behind me, I could kick real quick, and all of a sudden, the shadow of my foot is hitting them. I'm kicking them. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> and that's how they interact. It's all about dealing with shadow colors. Now, I know you're probably wondering how the hell you can do that. <coughs> right? I mean, shadows are just things that are post-processing all these entities. Don't ever actually mess with them. So the way we're going to do that is, let's say, for instance, that pyramid is your lantern. That lock is your player. And the ball is, well, the ball. So you're going to have a ray cast from this lantern in the direction of the player up against walls. Now what happens then is when it hits the wall, it will create a second 3D model of your character. And that's how it looks like your villain, like your shadow here. You see this black speck of the map applied to this model, so he looks almost flat. There's no light affecting him. You can't tell if his arms are here or here. You don't see that. So when it works, you move around the lantern, it moves around your shadow, and then the shadow just collect. Now the issue is that the solution here, is because they're all 3D models, you already have 3D collision built in. So every shadow is just a 3D object, and you just check the typical 3D collision. And that's how they work. Now the way we actually use it in the game, so for this environment here, for instance, you might be standing like the little place where that water bill is, have your lantern to the right, you can project your shadow up against the left. Now if you may move your lantern back a bit, your shadow is way farther down the level. So when you swipe a sword at an enemy who's way down there, you hit it. It's a shadow against that wall. So it's a way to avoid your red confrontation. Another fun way, if you have a bow and arrow later on, you can actually just simply shoot up your bow and arrow. The arrow's going to travel all along that wall and hit his shadow before hitting it. And this can work in all sorts of different fun environments in this painting and that they create, all based around these temples that these sages left behind to try and keep their magic in hand. And that's going to be how you mostly play the game. It's all going to be in these dungeons, actually going through like Dark Cloud and Zelda, experiencing these temples, solving puzzles. So for instance, you might actually use your lantern to hit a switch. For instance, so let's say that projector. I can't really reach that right now, but if I were to have my shadow up against the wall there, with its shadow up against the wall, and I swing my sword, I suddenly hit the switch. That's an example of using it for actual puzzle solving in these different dungeons. So I'll show you more right here when I'm looking for the actual environments. These are some of the designs we have for our actual temples in the game. So you're actually going to have these very painfully deep old temples that have been left behind and barren, but you get to explore them in moving ways. Now as you're exploring them, one of the unique aspects here is, like I said before, your shell is a lot. So you have to be dealing with them. And part of that for the player is a very much a coming of age story. Because he's going to have to learn to experience for the first time ever this darker side of him he's never dealt with. Now, all of us here, we've gone through those darker times. We know we can be dicks, we can be sweethearts, we can be all those different things. He's going to experience it, and that's how he's going to grow. And likewise, your shadow is going to grow. Because he's going to experience for the first time ever heroism. He's going to experience valor and compassion 
You feel what it's like to have someone actually trust you as you go through all these environments together, defeating enemies. And that's going to create a very unique situation of seeing two completely different characters grow in those ways. And because you're the player, you're going to have to grow along with them. You're going to have to experience for yourself what it's like to have these two different sides of you grow in those same directions. And so in a way for the player herself, it's actually going to be your own coming of age story. <coughs> because you're going to see this. Most of the time, we all like to put on our happy faces if you know we're the good person or the bad person. You're going to get to see them now interact with And as you can see here, there's going to be several different temples to go through, hopefully. And we'll cut those that we need to to scope. But the main part of this journey is understanding you and your shadow and finding ways to work together in the environment to change the world. And then just simply grow together as two individuals. And you see right here, we have our fun little main character in the shadow. An example of that speculative map working. And that's how you go through experience in the game. Bit more of a challenge to do, so I'm trying to minimize that by simply having the lantern be your only focus. 